Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time talking episode 11 of season 2 of Riverdale, The Wrestler. And again, this I th this is a solid episode, but I don't think it's one of the season's strongest. Um, let's just kind of get right into it. Um, the weakest aspect of this thing that I thought, I thought was uh, the whole situation with Jughead. Um, you know, it is kind of pointed out to him, it's like, dude, you are letting this whole, you know, I'm from the wrong side of the tracks, I hate the Northsiders thing, I mean, it's it's going way too far. And, you know, given all of the, how many of, basically how all of Jughead's real friends are Northsiders, uh, this is uh, not an un unfair criticism to level at him. Um, Jughead has really, really drank the whole Southside Serpent's Kool-Aid, and uh, he's uh, he's definitely gone off uh, the deep end here. Um, the whole thing with uh, the serpents being kind of there to sort of continue something that was connected to a Native American tribe is kind of interesting, but it just doesn't really feel very genuine to me. I mean, we've seen the serpents do have some redeeming values, but you know, they're not actually being anybody uh, of, uh, besides Tony, who that we know of, who has Native American ancestry in the in the group, uh, kind of kind of works against it. Uh, now, I do like that they point out that, um, like when Jughead writes that article that makes Tony's dad grandfather sound like some beat down, wrecked old man, that she is right quite rightfully pissed at him. And um, Jughead, to, to his credit, does realize that he went too far. He even kind of points it out, like, that wasn't my story to tell. And to his credit, he does sincerely apologize to Tony's grandfather for what he did. And uh, the grandfather, um, you know, even kind of restrains him when uh, Jughead is about to flip out at uh, the protest. And I thought it was very interesting what they did there with the serpents showing up as the peaceful protesters, or at least I should say the younger serpents. Supposedly, the older ones were supposed to be there providing security, and yet we never see them. And when there's a security situation, nothing gets done. So you kind of have to wonder, was this a deliberate thing, or were the writers just being a little on the lazy side? Um... And the whole thing with uh, them stealing the head of the statue, <sighs> I mean, I can't help but look at that and think, like, but this seems like way too much like something from an episode of The Simpsons for me to really be able to take this seriously. Now, they are obviously touching on what is kind of a hot topic issue these days, with especially, like, in reaction to, like, Confederate war statues and all of that. And, you know, okay. That's, I mean, that's something people are talking about in society today, so I can't fault the show for reflecting that. Uh, it just doesn't quite really jive for me very well. It just, it doesn't, just, just doesn't quite click. I think we need to see how this plays out a little bit more for me to really make a full judgment on that, but uh, so far with this episode, I'm not quite feeling this subplot. Um... Cheryl kind of had an interesting moment where she seems to be genuinely very regretful that her ancestors had a hand in massacring hundreds of Native Americans. Um, which is kind of interesting because, again, as I pointed out in our last review, Cheryl didn't seem to have any sort of problems blackmailing Archie, even though he saved her life. So it does show that Cheryl does have a sense of ethics, it's just a very complicated one. And I do have to point out that once again, in this episode, she's wearing uh, a spider brooch. In fact, I think the last one she wore last episode, I think, was a gold one. And this one, I believe, was black. And it's interesting that, uh, you know, Penelope is uh, very reverent uh, of all of this. But, you know, well, wouldn't she have had married into the Blossom family? So why is she all hepped up on what would be her husband's ancestor? Um, un unless I'm missing something here. So that's kind of weird. And uh, I do like how Penelope is uh, just kind of continuing on this, like, you know what? 
I'm just gonna mess with everybody because I can. Uh, she kind of has that moment where she looks like she's gonna try and uh, mess up the lives of the Coopers by uh, offering a little bit of uh, sympathy to Hal, which uh, certainly does open some interesting doors. And it is a fun time at the Cooper household. Hal wants absolutely nothing to do with Chick. Uh, Chick does understand his situation. Uh, and we do kind of find out a little bit more about him. And um, I, I do like that Chick is a very believable person. This is somebody who's really been kicked around by life. And... You know, he's he's the guy who understands that hey, there's always a catch, uh, and I love that bit where he confronted Betty with like, why did you come back to the ho the hotel that the little hostel for me? Don't tell me it's because I'm your brother. Don't tell me the truth. I'll know if you lie. And she kind of comes with like, I think you can. I think that there's this darkness inside me, and I think you can help me understand it. And I do like how Chick had earlier pointed out, like, hey, you've got these scars on your hand, these, like, crescent moons, from, like, doing this. So, and then the, the, that moment where they're kind of bonding over the laptop, and Chick is explaining, you know, why he cams, about how it's a way to escape from who he is. I mean, it does show that, uh, that, that Betty and uh, him might really do have that connection. And I also have to give Chick credit. He did come clean about going into Betty's room, uh, even as super creepy as that was. Uh, Jughead kind of even refers to it in the narration as the beginning of the dark education of Betty Cooper. So you gotta wonder, where is all this going? And, you know, she's learning from a cam boy, and I can't help but make me think about when she basically started doing a strip tease at uh, the White Worm. Like, whoa this could go into some really messed up areas and keep in mind Betty is in, is basically meant to be like 15 or 16 years old here so yeah and then there's the whole main subplot with like Archie trying to get closer to Hiram uh, at the behest of Agent Adams and everything that's going on there um, and uh, what's going on with uh, Veronica and her relationship with her parents. Uh, it's interesting that uh, Josie's mom, uh, Sierra, yeah, that's her name, Sierra, and the lodges seem pretty cozy. The last episode, and here, uh, Sierra and Hermione, are, Sierra does not want anything to do, Josie having to do anything, anything to do with Veronica. And uh, it's real, it's this complete claws out between Hermione and Sierra by the Sins episode. And the thing is, we never find out exactly what it is that Veronica is supposed to be doing for her parents that is so terrible. I mean, I assume it's acting as their agent at Riverdale High. And if it's manipulating the students of Riverdale High so that they, um, you know, don't interfere with her parents' plans, well, okay, I can kind of see Josie being pissed about that, but exactly how much can the students of Riverdale High really influence that? I mean, granted, Archie and his friends are the protagonists of the series, so the answer is a great deal, but nonetheless, it's kind of hard to imagine that Hiram sees that way, sees it that way. Um, and I do like how it's a case of, you know, what, why does it, what's going on with uh, Hiram, between Hiram and Archie? Now, before, Hiram kind of was a little bit more supportive of Archie's relationship with Veronica, at least to a degree. You know, um, he kind of said at the other episode to Veronica, like, you know, why don't you stick close to Archie? He's devoted to you, and he's a pretty big guy. Now, that, of course speaks that this is clearly a pragmatic choice, but still, he at least saw that Archie did have some, you know, genuine value there. Uh, but, you know, Archie asking Veronica, like, well, why doesn't your dad like me? <laughs> I like that one of the things that she, like, one of the first things she says is, well, you don't speak Spanish, which honestly makes Hiram seem kind of racist. <laughs> I mean, given his ethnicity and where he grew up, well, it would be extremely surprising if Archie did, in fact, speak Spanish. So that's 
a very unfair thing to hold against him. And then I love that bit where Archie just kind of flat out confronts Hiram. And, and you know what's really great about that scene is when um, uh, he goes in there to talk to Hiram, and Hiram is said, like, hey, how did you get in here? And Archie just says, well, the doorman let me in. And, he, and Hiram's like, well, I'm going to have to have a word with Andre. Why? He's, he's your daughter's boyfriend. Veronica comes into the room later, so we know for a fact that she is apparently home. Archie has been over to your place many times before. Why would Andre not let Archie in? Presumably, Veronica and, by extension, you have said, it is okay for Archie to come here. Unless Archie has to get per express permission each time he comes to the lodges, which I don't think Veronica would tolerate, this seems very weird. And I, I, I really like how um, Hiram, Archie just basically like sits flat out says, like, dude, why do you not like me? What is your deal? And Hiram just says, like, you really don't get it, do you? And, yeah, I mean, it is kind of clear that um, a guy, like an average guy like Archie, yeah, Hiram probably doesn't have the highest opinion in the world of him, but still. And, uh, you know, the previous events of the episode uh, do make that kind of clear. Uh, but I do like that Archie just has the courage to confront Hiram. And this is kind of interesting because Hiram's a guy who's very much into manipulation. He's, you know, direct confrontation is not really his thing. And the really hilarious thing about it all is that Hiram basically is like, like you're nobody, you're not good enough for my daughter. I mean, do you, of course I don't like you. And this leads to what a scene I absolutely love where Archie is just like, oh yeah, well, you know, I was here for your wife. I was here for your daughter while you were rotting away in prison. And Hiram just flips the hell out. He's like, you would say this to me. You would say this to me in my own home. Like, he can't believe the audacity of Archie. And the great thing about that is that that's what he goes for. Because he can't counter that in any way, shape, or form. Archie has him absolutely dead to rights. There is nothing he can do to turn that back on Archie. So he just explodes in anger and just... Oh, it's just great. Archie unknowingly absolutely hit the perfect note with that one, and it was beautiful. Of course, this does kind of come around to bite Archie in the butt, where, um, you know, the whole thing with him actually having to wrestle Hiram and, you know, getting taken down pretty easily. And the Hiram's whole thing of, well, I always win. Well, yeah, that's kind of a funny thing to say after you spend a year in jail and uh, only barely got away with not getting tossed in the clink long term. You know, never mind the fact that you're probably financially effed if this um, so side or so dale thing falls through. Never mind the fact that when the protesters show up, you only barely managed to salvage that situation. And you can see that Hiram is actually barely on the verge of pan is almost on the verge of panic there. So, yeah, Hiram talks a big game, and in all fairness, he's good. He's very good at what he does, but he's not invincible. And he certainly does not always win. And uh, I think this guy is heading for a big, big fall. And it's kind of hard not to think that he doesn't deserve it. Uh, especially after that situation where he and Archie go jogging and they had that little meat breakfast at Pops. And he says, okay, you know, I'm, I helped you. And, um, you know, we've had a meal together. So I'm going to tolerate you, Archie, because eventually Veronica is going to get bored with you, move on to somebody else. And, you know, eventually I'm going to ensure, and he doesn't quite say it, but I'm going to ensure that she gets married to somebody that I approve of and that I think of, is worthy of her. And that doesn't include you. And this is just a perfect classic Hiram. In a lot of ways, he's like Cersei Lannister. He sees his daughter and his wife as extensions of himself. And it's not to say that he doesn't love Veronica. Hiram clearly does. 
whether or not he genuinely loves his wife, well, that's probably a bit of a different story, but nonetheless. And by having them be extensions of himself, it's really just a continuation of, it's all about me. It's all about how about Hiram Lodge. Of course Hiram Lodge's daughter is going to get married to someone that Hiram Lodge approves of. And if she chooses to, like, she wants to be with someone that I don't care for, well, I'll do something about that. Or I'll just wait until this little passing fancy goes along. At the end of the day, Veronica is mine. That is the read I get on Hiram. And I do like how Archie goes out there and he takes down Chuck even after, you know, Hiram manipulates somebody who Archie should not have been able to, should not have been fighting in the first place, and who by all logic he should have lost. And he uses him, beats Chuck using the move that Hiram showed him. Also, did you guys notice that Chuck is on Black Lightning? The same actor. Uh, nothing cool. I just I couldn't help but notice that when I was watching the second episode of Black Lightning. Which is really good. I really like that show. Um, and I love how the, the, the bit where their eyes meet afterwards. And then Archie kind of goes there and talks to Hiram again. And says, you know, I was... You know, Hiram, I was yeah, like, yeah, I was thinking about music. But now I'm kind of thinking about maybe going into business. And this so kind of jives with that speech that uh, Hiram gave about, like, you know, it's about willpower. I have the will to do what I want, to make the world the way I want it to be. And you do see that Hiram kind of understands that, you know what, that's not something that's unique to me. I threw everything I could at this kid, and he came back swinging. I mean, of course, Archie was never going to beat Hiram. Hiram might be an older guy, but he's still in very good physical condition, and he has a lot, and he is a, an extremely experienced wrestler. Sure, he's out of practice, but Archie's been doing this for, what, less than a week? Well, of course he was going to lose that wrestling match. But here, Hiram sees that, you know what, one way or the other, I've misjudged this kid. He, I, I, I thought I had him beat, but he came back and showed me that he's stronger than I thought. And I can't help but wonder if that whole bit where he hit Hiram with where it hurts about not being there for his family when he was in jail. If Hiram didn't see him, it's like, yeah, I, I don't like to admit it, but I might have misjudged this kid. Maybe, maybe I could turn this kid into what, uh, what I would approve of. And I also love the fact that one of the re that Hiram's main reasons for hating Archie is basically that Hiram really doesn't like his dad for, in Hiram's eyes, basically cuckolding him. It's like, yeah, your dad was messing around with a married woman. How do you? How do I know that you're not the same kind of person? Well, okay, granted, Archie did kiss Betty, but he came clean with Veronica about that, and uh, you know, he's 15, 16 years old. Your, your daughter is, is his first real girlfriend? I mean, yeah, I mean, there is no real logic to that. Hiram is just lashing out, and taking it out on Archie is an easy way to get back at Fred, but still. Um, okay, I'm almost at the 20-minute mark on that, so this, I'm going to call it here, guys. Uh, again, this is a really good episode, uh, and the fact that Archie is just kind of going in there, getting ever closer at the behest of Agent Adams. Oh man, when Veronica finds out about this, this is going to be great. This is going to be fantastic. Okay guys, I'm going to call it here. Uh, as always, please comment, rate, subscribe. Of course, you can follow me on uh, Twitter at Who's Your Jedi, and please also join me on Tumblr at Jedi Reviewer. Until next time, take care and have a good one.